Soon, we'll all be paying more for our water. In an interim decision, the industry regulator Ofwat has told the 16 companies in England and Wales that they won't be accepting their proposed increases to bills. Instead, they've gone for a figure a third lower, meaning on average bills will rise by 21% over five years. The industry says it needs the money for much needed infrastructure, and perhaps no wonder. There's been a steady drip, drip, drip of negative stories about the sector. Leaks wasting millions of gallons of clean water, huge profits for shareholders and bonuses for bosses, but untreated sewage flowing into our rivers time and again. With the recent change in government comes a feeling that perhaps this could all be run much, much better. I'm Neil Patterson. This is the Sky News Daily. Later on, we will be hearing from the industry itself. Water UK will be joining us. Uh, so too, Fergal Sharkey, once best known as lead singer of The Undertones, now a campaigner for Cleaner Rivers. I was doing nothing more than minding my own business, standing in the middle of a river, trying to catch a trout. They were <laughs> treating me with utter contempt and I refusing to cooperate. But we start with our business correspondent, Paul Kelso, uh, joining us from, from, I believe, the banks of the Thames, appropriately enough. Uh, Paul, just outline exactly what Off What have announced today. Yeah, it's lovely here. This is Henley-on-Thames, site of the Royal Regatta, the rowing event. Gorgeous to look at, not necessarily so nice to be in. Um, what well, Off What has done, given what's called its uh, price review, every five years the water industry has to put forward a business plan. There are nine big regional monopoly providers and a few other smaller water companies. They have to tell the regulator what they plan to spend to run their business, how much they intend to invest to clean up uh, rivers like this, to invest in new infrastructure and improvements, and crucially, how much they would like to charge customers to do that. And the verdict across the board, this is England and Wales for those big nine regional monopoly providers, is that prices will go up around 21% and wow. they will spend £88 billion on running their businesses and investing in improvements for the future. Now, the regulator has said it will make sure that customers are paying a fair price. They'll only be playing, paying for new infrastructure. And it also says to the industry, we think this is enough for you to be able to raise the private finance you need. This is a privatised system. The whole point is the taxpayer doesn't pay the private sector. The big question is whether that is enough for the water companies and particularly for Thames Water, because the context here is they were asking for a great deal more. They wanted to spend £100 billion, pounds, so about £15 billion more than they're getting, and they wanted to charge customers on average more than 30% more than they're paying today. So we wait and see whether off what has pulled off this balancing act of customers wearing increases and water companies actually delivering, which plenty would say they haven't. For yeah, a long time. Plenty, plenty of people would say that. But I mean, what industry cannot cope with a 21% rise in the amount that they are able to charge customers? What on earth is going on here? Let's go back five years to when this process was done in 2019. I've just been reminding myself of what happened then. You look at that document, off what was demanding of the same water companies a cut to consumer bills. Yeah of around 13%. They said the companies could spend £50 billion, so half as much as they're going to spend this time around. They could deliver £50 billion while cutting bills, in part through efficiencies. And that, I think on balance, it's fair to say, was a fiction. It was a fiction that was conspired in by the companies, by previous governments, and by the regulator, because it simply didn't happen. I did a couple of word searches just to give you a sense of how the world has changed. Uh, sewage appears only three times in that 2019 overview. The word outflows, not at all. Much more frequent was mention of drought and floods. If you put sewage outflows into a, into a word search today, that is the absolute centre of public concern. Sewage pouring into rivers like this when it rains heavily, when the water companies are sometimes allowed to do it, and other times when it is not. And that political salience of poop, if I can say that, pushed it up the political agenda and the public and the level of public concern. And so the focus of the regulator, of politicians, has changed. And in that time, of course, the financial world has altered completely. Sure. And having essentially seen bills fall in real terms for decades, now 
facing up to the reality that customers, perhaps it's entirely realistic that bills will have to rise if you're going to uh, spend more on services. We have water companies operating, as you state, in a monopoly. We've got them paying out record dividends to their shareholders. They are clearly in financial good health. We paying for infrastructure improvements. Why is that not a normal cost that would be taken out of the net profits that these companies have been making year after year after year? The entire system looks very much like a failure not just of management at those companies, but a failure of regulation. You know, the regulator has been sitting there with different priorities to the one it set out today uh, and has allowed them uh, to, to get away with it. Debt has been piling up. Um, money has been flowing out. Around, there are various assessments of how much the, the dividends that have been taken out of the industry during the, uh, the privatised era, between 50 and £80 billion, pounds, depending on how you slice them. Two things, I think, that have changed. Um, monitoring of sewage outflows, which are these... Uh, we have, we've got this Vic, Victorian miracle of a sewage system, but wastewater and from the streets and drains mixes with waste from homes and they share the same pipe. When there's too much water, they flow out into rivers and waterways. Uh, we didn't know that was happening. Now every sewage outflow in Britain is monitored. We can see it and we can count it. And the last year saw record uh, numbers and increases even allowing for the fact more were monitored. The other thing that's changed is people spend a lot more time in rivers. That combination of awareness an outrage has exposed what's been going on. But even under this five-year plan, the investment that we're going to see in infrastructure and all the rest of it, we're still talking about ridiculous amounts of sewage being put into our waterways. At least, by 2030, 200,000 sewage discharges every year. It will take decades for them to stop. We have a system that's 150 years old, wastewater and drain water shares the same pipes. It is truly phenomenal amounts of money that will be required to replace all of that. So you have to ameliorate, you have to build tanks, you have to uh, treat better, you have to do a great deal of work that you wouldn't ideally start today. You would have been treating this as a priority uh, decades ago, and that simply wasn't done. But I still don't get it. How can companies who have made record profits be pleading poverty? be saying that we are close to collapse? It's a good question, uh, and one I think they struggle to answer. They've been allowed to extract that money. Uh, they've been allowed to uh, pass it on to shareholders. Uh, and it's fundamental to the privatised system. It's been restated today by Ofwat. When we press uh, new ministers on this, they will say companies have to be allowed to make a turn. They have to be able to uh, get a return on investment. Otherwise, they simply will not... Uh, put their money in, but there has plainly been an imbalance. Well, that is the story in a very big, wet nutshell. Uh, so what's the industry response? I'm very pleased that Stuart Colville, Deputy CEO of Water UK, which represents the water companies, joins us on The Daily. So we proposed over £100 billion of expenditure, and what Ofwat have said today is actually they want to cut that by about 16 billion pounds, taking it right down. And I suppose our concern as an industry would be, look, we've been listening to people's concerns over the past couple of years. This was our plan to try and deal with all of that. And so what we really want to do now is understand why off what the regulator thinks they can cut uh, the investment programme so steeply. I suppose there will be those listening to what you've just said there, Stuart, and, and wondering what the water industry has done itself over the past couple of years, when clearly these yeah. issues have had more prominence than they have had before. I think no one can put their hand on the heart and say that the performance of every water company has been as exemplary as uh, people would want. Of course, that's true. But there have also been some really, really important and strong points of progress, whether that's on leakage, which has come down very significantly, or on beaches, uh, where we have significantly improved the number of beaches that are rated excellent by the Environment Agency. Clearly, though, people are fed up of sewage going into rivers, this issue of sewage spills, where 
um, actually a really important part of our plan was to bring that down and tackle that as fast as possible, cutting spills by 40% over the coming few years. Off what the regulator has taken £2 billion off that £11 billion component of the plan to deal with sewage spills. Uh, and so we have to take a hard look at that now and say, actually, is that going to be enough to meet the kind of expectation that people have for as rapid progress as possible? But what on earth has the water industry been doing with its profits for the past 20 years? The water industry has invested about £215 billion of capital expenditure over the last 30 years. And that's gone into everything from drinking water upgrades. You know, we have some of the safest and best drinking water. Every single river in England is polluted right now. So if you look at the Environment Agency, the way they assess it, they measure something called good ecological status, which is essentially the health. 86% of rivers do not have good ecological status. Agriculture is the principal source of pollution in rivers. The second biggest source, though, is the water industry and sewage. And that's exactly why we've proposed all of this capital spend in this £100 billion programme. Huge amounts of that is going into not just overflow spills in rivers, but um, also cleaning up sewage works. What governments, regulators and frankly industry have never done is say, well, hang on, people are using their rivers more and more for open swimming and paddling and this kind of stuff. Um, And actually, I think the framework is out of date. We've got to recognise that people aren't just using the coast anymore to do this swimming and and that kind of thing. We've got to recognise people want to be able to swim in rivers and invest accordingly. Just explain to me, though, we have one company currently in special measures. We have every water company paying fines. We've seen discharges from storm overflows rise by 54%. Even in just March of this year, sewage was pumped for over 800 hours in one single month into the River Chess. From from what you're saying, you're describing an industry that is putting its house in order. The fact of the matter is, it seems like it's an, an industry which is on its knees. Look, I think the performance on sewage spills is not good enough. Uh, We need to end them as quickly as possible. We need to tackle that, which is exactly why we've been proposing so much money going into that. And that's why, actually, it's been really reassuring today to see the regulator put in place two really important principles. The first principle is that if a water company has already been funded to make an improvement, if there's an obligation on them to deliver something, no more money will go from the customer to deliver that. And the second principle they set out today is that if a company takes money from this bill increase and you know they're supposed to deliver something new, if they fail to do that, not only will that money go back to the customer, but they'll be fined on top of it. Stuart, thank you. In a moment, we'll reflect on that defence of the industry with Fargo Sharkey, back soon. Welcome back. Now, if you've noticed a lot more discussion about the state of our rivers recently, it's likely thanks to the prodigious social media output of just one man. Once upon a time, Fergal Sharkey was lead singer of The Undertones, of course best known for Teenage Kicks. Then came a solo career which also saw him sell stacks of records. Now he campaigns for the country's rivers and waterways to be pollution free and for the industry to clean up its act. I appreciate that we have a, an eloquence of language here we have to maintain, but I, uh, shall we say, I began to have what I referred to as the uh, WTF days. Yeah. And there was an ever reoccurring number of those. By way of example, the previous government had been taken to the European Court of Justice by the European Commission in 2012 and told by the highest court in Europe, what you're doing is illegal, you're acting illegally, you're in breach of the regulations by allowing water companies to do this. And what did government do in those 12 years? They developed that classic... Whitehall bureaucratic approach will create a process. We're going to start monitoring these things. It's because we're not monitoring enough. Sorry, why are you monitoring something you were told by the court you shouldn't be doing in the first place? Fast forward to 2024, though, Fergal, and, you know, we've had the announcement from Off What today, not what the water industry was looking for, indeed Water UK describing it as the biggest ever cut in investment, but 21% across the board in terms of a rise to our, to, to our average bills. What do you make of it? Today was clearly a big decision day about the future of the water industry. It was also a referendum day about the future of Off What, and I think it's completely failed. Because when you weave in through all of that presentation and all of that shine and gloss and spin, when you get into the nitty gritty, by my calculations, some like Southern Water, you're going to end up paying 58% more in real terms by 2030 than you do today. 
The simple truth of the matter is this situation was caused by an utter failure of Ofwat over the last 33 years. It was caused by financial engineering and greed on behalf of the shareholders and water companies. And today's announcement does nothing to alleviate or change that situation. In fact, it just reinforces my own personal belief. Government now needs to instigate a complete root and branch review of the whole of the regulatory system of the water industry, off what, and the EA, with a view to demolishing and completely rebuilding and restructuring. Because again, it's failed the consumer and failed the environment. We should not be asked to pay twice for a service we've already paid for and we never got. Just expand on, on that for me, because what's not challenging the kind of the central points that you were making there, we are where we are. And quite clearly, water infrastructure in this country requires a huge amount of investment. It's going to have to come from somewhere. And given that the dividends that are paid out, it, that's not money that we can reclaim. I mean, what other option is there apart from bumping up our water bills? Water companies have a legal obligation to build, operate and maintain, or what the law actually says is to build and operate a system that can effectually deal with the contents of those sewers. So it doesn't matter what's in the sewage system. It doesn't matter what got there. That's what the law says. That's what they're required to do. That's the business they're in. And water companies admit it. We know that's what we're required to do. Off what also says that customers have provided all of the funding needed for the last 33 years for water companies to meet and deliver that legal obligation. And water companies admit it. To use the language, water companies have certified Every single year for 33 years, they know what their legal obligation is. They've had the money. The simple truth of the matter is there is no earthly reason. If anybody needs to pay for this, it should be the shareholders. And as one national newspaper now refers to it, the water industry is nothing more than a legitimised rip-off. And the rip-off should stop today. It should have ended here. And that's the announcement off weight should have made. We know your views of off what. We also know your views of the last kind of Conservative administration and, and their role in all of this. We have crashed headlong into a, a change of government recently. Do you get any indication that Labour is taking this seriously? I know that the Environment Secretary, Steve Reid, has called in the water companies to have words with them, presumably quite stern words. But, but short of this government either finding the money from elsewhere or nationalising the industry, what can they do? I can think of a number of ways that I could nationalise the water industry tomorrow and not cost the taxpayer a penny. The simple truth is, from my travels over the country the last six weeks, the level and depth of rage, anger and frustration on doorsteps is palatable. I hope at this minute in time that Steve Reid is in fact conducting a very loud, very one-sided conversation with water company fat cat bosses and making it very clear to them what's going to be demanded of them. If you don't like that job, hand the keys back. We'll happily find somebody else. In the aftermath of the off-water announcement, we've seen shares in these water companies actually rising. I mean, profit at the heart of this industry, is, is that what's the problem? You need a regulator that's proactive, that's informed, that's decisive, and that's prepared and capable and willing to hold those companies to account. That's what we've been sadly lacking for the last 33 years. That created a vacuum, and that's why we now have a situation where these companies have paid themselves £72 billion of our money. Maybe should have more of that should have been spent on the sewage system. They've saddled these companies with £64 billion worth of debt for me, there's a two-stage solution. These companies not only need to be held to account, the mood on the street, they need to be gaffer taped into a chair, they need to be chained to the fire, never mind held their feet held to it, and government needs to absolutely overhaul the regulatory system. Fergal, given the state of the rivers and indeed how busy you are with, with this campaigning, do you actually get out fishing much anymore? Ironically enough, I've been out fishing once <laughs> since the opening of the trunk <laughs> season back in April. So I'm quite... Here's the thing. I, I've had this extraordinary life where since I've been 20 years old, I can travel all over the world and random people would walk up to me in the street and want to talk about music mm -hmm. and be engaging and be happy and gigs they've been to and records they bought. What an extraordinary, extraordinary life to lead. Over the last three or four years... 
people now want to talk to me about effluent and poo in rivers. <laughs> Here's the thing. I would quite like as quickly as possible to go back to talking about music and to go back minding my own business, standing in the middle of a river, having to deal with a very petulant, uncooperative trout. <laughs> the rules are very simple for the regulator, for government and off what. Go and fix this and I will happily leave you all to get on with your lives so we can all get on with our business because the general public is having to deal with something we should not even have to think about. We pay for a service and we get it. That music system of trust has collapsed. And it is that absence of trust that will perhaps compel the changes necessary to guarantee clean water from the taps for generations to come. There is an appetite for change, combined with a general disgust at what's been allowed to flow unchecked and untreated into our rivers. So now it's over to the government and the water companies to get on with it. Otherwise, we'll all find ourselves swimming up a certain creek without a canoe. We, of course, asked Offwat to respond to Fergal's comments, and Offwat spokesman said this. We are all agreed that the water sector needs to change and to do better by customers and the environment. Today we set out the biggest investment package ever to dramatically cut pollution and sewage spills, drive down leakage, and build nine new reservoirs to secure the long-term supply of water. And this is underpinned by stronger safeguards to protect customers with a doubling of support for those struggling to pay, automatic penalties when companies miss targets, and a clawback mechanism to return to customers money that is not properly invested. That's your lot for this edition of The Daily. Back again tomorrow.